transport sector is subject to a lot of uncertainties at the moment in terms of economic growth, in terms of population growth, the future trade patterns, where the trade will take place and what type of commodities will be transported. Uh, but one of the things we do find is that we, we do project that the transport demand will triple by 2050 globally compared to 2015 levels. Um, on terms of passenger transport, um, the big changes obviously shift to Asia uh, for, for, the, for the demand. Uh, we see China and India uh, covering around one-third of the global passenger movements by, by 2050. And the OECD share, that is today around 45%, will decline below 25%. So there's a major shift in terms of where the passengers will be moving. Same goes for freight. We do project the freight volumes to triple by 2050 as well. But this sector is really subject to a lot of uncertainties, especially because of the uncertainties related to economic growth, the future trade patterns, etc. What you've already seen in the cities around the world is increasing number of shared mobility solutions, uh, free-floating scooters, bikes, cars, motorcycles, and we do see that this will be a major trend in the cities in the future. We project that the shared mobility solutions will be covering around 40% of the passenger mobility in the cities uh, in our world. If I can follow up on that, I mean, one of the things we're seeing certainly in a lot of major Western cities is increased pedestrianisation in cities and exclusion zones for, for um, certain vehicles. Is that a trend you see from cities? I think we will be seeing some policy responses in terms of the congestion, in terms of the pollution that is taking place in cities, and, and rightly so. I think uh, walking and cycling are key elements of urban mobility, and we should not forget it. And we do see an increasing number of cities putting in place infrastructure and policies to encourage walking and cycling. So you know, your team also simulated how certain disruptions might affect transport flows. What do you see coming potentially? It's actually interesting because quite often when we present these projections for transport demand, we get a question, but what about 3D printing? What about shared mobility? And so this year's outlook, we really focus on these disruptions. Um, what we see, I think there are several different elements of that. The first one is which disruptions are most likely to happen? And then the, which disruptions have the biggest potential impact on transport sector? And the ones that I think the most likely to happen are related to those that are already existing. We see e-commerce, and we do think this disruption will continue to grow. But it's also a response that depends on the policy responses do we have for, for e-commerce. Uh, the other ones is mobility as a service, or shared mobility. Uh, we, we do see a trend of especially younger people not driving their driver's license anymore. Uh, in the city of Stockholm, 10% uh, of 18-year-olds only drive a driver's license today. So this kind of changes in behavior that, that will definitely continue in our cities. Then if we go to the other side, which are the, the most disruptive developers perhaps, um, I would say 3D printing has a huge potential to really disrupt the transport sector on the freight side. Also the new trade uh, routes, uh, there's just a lot of talk about Arctic shipping, uh, the uh, new Eurasia connections, uh, but these are subject to a lot of uncertainties whether they actually will happen or not, uh, but their impact is, is potentially very high.